The 2003 Star Wars Clone Wars Micro Series is a bit of a cult classic among Star Wars fans, known for introducing us to General Grievous and detailing the earlier stages of the Battle of Coruscant. Most of the series' first chapter was centered around one massive pivotal campaign, the Battle of Munilinst. This sprawling battle was fought over one of the wealthiest worlds in the galaxy, the headquarters of the intergalactic banking clan. In this video, we're going to give you all the juicy details of the battle. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Munilinst, located in the Obtrexa sector of the Outer Rim's New Territories, was a remote world, but it played a crucial role in galactic civilization. The planet was extraordinarily rich in precious metals, so much so that the planet's wealth was considered inestimable. When the Moons developed space travel and joined the Galactic Republic, they quickly took advantage of the position of power that put them in. They founded the Intergalactic Banking Clan and took over the entire galactic financial system, keeping currencies and markets stable with their vast reserves of capital. Over the millennia, Mulans became unfathomably powerful, using its role as the headquarters of the IGBC to rival Coruscant itself. The Moons bought up numerous worlds and took control of countless more through debt traps, carving out a substantial chunk of the galaxy for themselves. When the IGBC joined the Confederacy of Independent Systems, they brought most of this wealth and power with them. A few IGBC branches remained neutral, most notably the Scipio branch, while the Bank of Argal remained in the Republic, but the two most powerful IGBC worlds, Munilinst and Mygido, seceded. In the early months of the Clone Wars, Munilinst and the IGBC contributed significantly to the Separatist war effort. They supplied vast numbers of warships and Hellfire droids to the CIS military, and Munilinst's wealth bankrolled Separatist insurgencies in dozens of sectors. Munilinst was a big problem for the Republic, which made it a big target. Just four months into the Clone Wars, the Republic decided to conquer Munilinst, deeming it too much of a threat to ignore. The planet was well defended and would not be easy to conquer, but the Republic was willing to deploy a significant chunk of the Grand Army to even the odds. Obi-Wan Kenobi was chosen to lead the offensive. Sand Hill and the other Muns on the IGBC's ruling council weren't taking any chances with the defense of their homeworld. Vast fleets of warships protected Munilinst from orbit, including at least 14 3-kilometer long orbital defense platforms. On the ground, it boasted millions of droids, with the largest garrison located at the planetary capital, Harnadin, which was defended by extensive arrays of anti-air artillery. Among these battle droids were deadly droidikas, snipers positioned all over Harnadin, and a squadron of IG series Lancer droids, which were held in reserve. Thousands of Hailfire droids, dwarf and homing spider droids, AATs and MTTs reinforced Munilinst's ground armies. On request from San Hill, Count Dooku also sent two of his most trusted agents to assist in the defense of Munilinst, Dirge and Asajj Ventress. The Republic's assault force, meanwhile, was by far the largest it had deployed in the Clone Wars up until that point. Commanded by Generals Obi-Wan Kenobi, Volvif Mon, Oshi Jid, and Commander Anakin Skywalker, the fleet was composed of over 200 acclimated class assault ships led by the Navuta B. Many of these ships had been converted into carriers for V-19 Torrent Starfighters, but many more were packed to the brim with LAAT gunships, ATTEs, SPHAT artillery and clone troopers from the 3rd Systems Army. Even if only half of the fleet consisted of troop ships, this would mean the Republic deployed 1.6 million clone troopers on Munilinst. If the majority of the fleet were troop ships, that number could have been double. The Republic was playing for keeps. Upon exiting hyperspace above Munilinst, the Republic's assault ships immediately disgorged all of their LAATs and Starfighters, landing the first wave of their assault force before the IGBC fleet could respond. As Anakin Skywalker took command of the Republic Starfighter squadrons, the Republic's carriers engaged Munilinst's gun platforms, while the troop ships descended to the planet's surface. The Jedi generals led the first wave of clone troopers in a rapid assault on Munilinst's major cities, with General Kenobi spearheading the assault force on Harnadin. 
The gunships took serious casualties from Hellfire droids and artillery emplacements, but they nonetheless deployed the first wave of clones which cleared zones for the assault ships to land. As the first wave of clones clashed with the droid army on the outskirts of Mutalin's cities, the assault ships deployed the rest of the army and SPHATs. As the battle took shape in space and on the ground, General Kenobi deployed his secret weapon, the Mutalin's 10, a squad of ARC troopers. Led by Alpha 77, also known as Captain Fordo, the Mutalins 10 deployed via gunship into the heart of Harnadin. They immediately came under fire from snipers and AATs, but rapidly neutralized these threats and proceeded to their objective, a massive cannon located at the base of the IGBC's command tower. They scaled the cannon, destroyed its droid defenders, planted bombs on it, and blew it to hell without word of their incursion making it back to IGBC leadership. Once the job was done, the Munilins 10 scaled the command tower where they would lie in wait for the next stage of the mission. By that point in the battle, the assault on Harnadin and the other cities was well underway. Republic forces had proceeded according to the standard GAR battle plan up to that point. The advance force and the bulk of the army had linked up and pushed the droid armies back into the cities while the SPHAT columns advanced to the front lines. The SPHATs proved crucial to the Republic offensive. They pummeled everything in their path with turbo laser fire, annihilating whole companies of droids with each shot. The IGBC's armies quickly collapsed under sustained SPHAT fire and fell back to the city limits, using buildings for shelter. So the SPHATs just shelled the buildings and the Republic's steady advance continued. IGBC leaders in Harnadin started to panic, realizing they had nothing that could withstand the barrage. Their fears were exacerbated by the destruction of the cannon at the base of their tower, which they erroneously attributed to the SPHATs. With their space forces and starfighters tied up in the orbital battle, the Muns saw no other choice but to deploy Dirge to clear out the Republic's cannons. Dirge took command of the battalion of Lancer droids the IGBC had kept in reserve and tore through the streets of Harnadin, slaughtering any clones he came across. Upon reaching the city outskirts, he cut a swath through Kenobi's army and made a beeline for the SPHAT columns. With power lancers and explosives, the lancers obliterated the Republic's artillery, causing chaos behind Republic lines. As Dirge and his company began to attack targets of opportunity all over the battlefield, General Kenobi took notice and ordered his men to mount up. Taking command of the Lancer Battalion, Kenobi met Dirge head-on in a speeder bike joust. The clone lancers and IG droids tore into each other as Kenobi and Dirge clashed. Kenobi destroyed Dirge's speeder, but the Gendai warrior rose undeterred from the wreckage, seizing Kenobi's speeder and unseating the Jedi Knight. Kenobi and Dirge then fought a brief but fierce duel. Dirge shrugged off Kenobi's initial lightsaber strikes, but he was ultimately brought down when Kenobi severed his limbs. After beating Dirge, Kenobi sped off to the IGBC command tower. As the remnants of his army regrouped and tore into the remaining droids, Kenobi joined the Munilins 10 and launched a surprise attack on the Moon's command center. There, they were confronted by a regenerated Dirge. After a fierce battle, Kenobi crushed him, or splattered him more accurately, yet again. The command center and most of the IGBC's leadership were all captured. As Republic ground forces mopped up the remnants of the defense, the battle raged in orbit. Under the leadership of Commander Skywalker, Republic Space Forces steadily dismantled the IGBC fleet, destroying the defense platforms one by one. Victory seemed near at hand when a new assailant joined the battle, a Genovex class starfighter piloted by Asajj Ventress. Skywalker and Ventress began a ferocious dogfight which took them from orbit down through the streets of Hunnedin and then back again. Ventress ultimately fled into hyperspace, luring Skywalker after her. They finished their battle on the surface of Yavin 4. Meanwhile, Republic forces under the command of General Mon mopped up the remaining defenders, both on the surface and in orbit. Eventually, Kenobi's forces found and disabled the central control computers coordinating the defenders, causing the remaining droids to shut down. The battle was won, and shortly afterwards, Skywalker returned from Yavin 4 in Ventress's Starfighter. Few battles in the Clone Wars had anywhere near as much impact as the Battle of Munilins. The banking clan headquarters remained under Republic occupation for the rest of the war. After the war, 
The Republic occupation became an imperial one which lasted for over a century, as Munilinst was unfortunate enough to remain part of the imperial remnant for the rest of known galactic history. During the Clone Wars, it provided an economic boost to the Republic and its fall was a serious blow to the Separatist war effort, a major loss of capital, production facilities and personnel. The IGBC chairman, San Hill, and the other banking clan leaders were all captured. Hill was later freed from Republic custody, but the others weren't so lucky, as far as we know. Republic casualties were substantial, yet minimal compared to the Separatists. Munilinst got shafted hard by this battle, but hey, we can't really say it didn't have it coming. But what do you think? Are there other early Clone Wars battles you'd like us to take a look at? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and as always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.